everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy. In this quick one, I will show you how you can create a wheel picker component for your Ionic app. And uh, let's dive right into it. So I've created a blank new Ionic app. And first of all, we add a Cordova plugin called Cordova Wheel Selector. So you will find this also under the name Wheel Selector, but um, in general, this is called Wheel Picker. I don't know why it's Selector, but uh, anyway. Um, make sure to add the Cordova plug into your project. And once this is finished, also add the uh, according Ionic native package for the Wheel Picker. Once this is done, we can go to the app module file and import the wheel selector. Uh, oh, wow. Automatically imported. Amazing. And also add it to the providers. And we also want to use some dummy uh, JSON data. So we will use the HTTP client as well and therefore import the HTTP client module from an Angular common slash HTTP uh, like this and add the HTTP client module to your imports. So that's all for the setup part. Um, let's move on to our page. Um, perhaps we can build the amazing view. So we'll pick a whatever. And inside we simply need two buttons um, to trigger two functions. So the first will be open picker, uh, open picker, and the second one will call a bit more advanced one, open remote picker. So not really a remote picker, but remote uh, JSON picker, whatever. Um, that's all for the view, and now we can continue with our home TS. So first of all, add the um, selector. <coughs> the wheel selector and make sure the import is right and I will also add the toast controller just for some uh, uh, verification of what we've picked uh, then let me bring in some dummy JSON data so I've created this dummy JSON which holds two arrays one with some days and with some amazing people from uh, Ionic perhaps you noticed the names and then we got our two functions, which were uh, open picker. And the second one was uh, open. Uh, good, I took another look. This would have given error otherwise. So we got those two functions now. Let's start with the basic one. Um, we can use our selector. It only has show and hide. So of course we use show. And then we need to pass in some options and there are quite a few options we can use and I will also add a then block already and that's it so um, regarding the options first of all you can set a title so let's say select your contact whatever you want um, this will be at the top of the picker um, then you could say something like positive button text, uh, choose, also of course negative button text, nah. um, and then the most important stuff is actually the items to display. And this needs to be an array and each entry of the array is one wheel in the wheel picker, so Walden column more or less. And let's make the first column this dot dummy JSON uh, days and the second one this dot dummy JSON dot people. So now we have a wheel with two wheels or a picker with two wheels, one days, one people, uh, and we can select from them. What you could do as well is say uh, default items. So if you want to pre select something, um, so this would be for the index. Um, zero which means this targets the first wheel and the value should be this dot dummy JSON days at the position whatever you want dot description so you have to specify the real value in here uh, let's also pre-select one for the second wheel 
and this time we use people one dot description so we will see that something will be pre-selected in the result block we will get something back and let's craft a string for our toast notification which says selected uh, result at the position zero which is the result of the first wheel and there we also use description of course you could use something else so um, you will have the index as well of the result so um, that means you could access more data of this block if there would be more data um, with and now let's bring in the second result of the second wheel and also let's use description here so that's it now we craft a little toast from this uh, toast controller create just to display what we've actually selected we could also have some scope variable oh, no scope I've been with some angular JS lately so no scope in here and then toast present and that's it so this is basically how you bring up a new wheel picker inside your app um, let me copy this for the remote picker and for the remote picker we will use the um, random user API so we make an HTTP request which we haven't imported right so private HTTP HTTP client um, not sure if this is right I'll remove it for now um, so then go ahead this HTTP get and we make a request to uh, this URL so random user um, perhaps if I can bring it in you see it will give us some JSON data inside a results array so um, we subscribe to the result here uh, result and then we do something with the result of course we then need to put our um, show of the picker inside this block because this is an async operation and now um, select your content wherever uh, we can keep this like it is and now for the items we pass in our result at the position results so um, you might have seen it let me bring it in one more time um, the result is an array itself so an array which contains multiple users um, but now the default uh, value which the selector tries to access is not there because in general it will look for the key description now we could map the data um, but what we can do as well is pass in a display key and uh, let's see the completion so the JSON key to display by default it is description and we say we want to use the display key um, email of this object and then uh, the result whatever but now it's result at the position zero dot email not description anymore so um, as we are using Cordova plugins we cannot simply run this inside the browser I will show you an alternative um, but first let's see this on a device in action all right so here's the app on my device and let's start with the first function open picker brings up the picker at the bottom and you can see it really looks like a native iOS picker and also we see that we got some pre-selected items so for the first row uh, we have the last day Friday selected for the second we have the first description which is max so uh, we can now pick whatever we want perhaps Wednesday with Brandy and choose and you see selected Wednesday with Brandy and of course you can bring it up all the time it looks really nice you could add more columns other data and customize it completely to your needs so let's take a look at the second one so if I hit open remote JSON picker it takes a few seconds to load or perhaps one or two seconds actually but um, if you make a request at that point perhaps show a short loading indicator and then we can see that we got some random emails here at the bottom 
I can select one and choose it and we see selected the email. So um, this means you can also bring in your own JSON from your backend and display it somehow in this cool picker format. Now this uh, picker still has a few limitations. So first of all, it's a Cordova plugin, which means you can't use this inside the browser. If you're building a PWA or deploy your app as a website, um, this is not really helpful. Also, um, a little problem is that you need to choose a display key at this point. And if you have multiple columns and only one display key, you need to somehow map your data to match um, the given display key or the one you picked. So you have to make some transformation on the result of your API because it's not very likely um, that it automatically fits your needs. So I told you that I wanted to show you an alternative. So this is the Ion Multi Picker. I initially wanted to create this tutorial with this one, but then uh, pick the Cordova one for some reasons. Um, and the Ion Multi Picker, as you can see, it looks more or less the same, but uh, as you can see, it really looks like it's uh, made for iOS. And on Android, this might not feel uh, so native. And that's why I picked the Cordova plugin. But uh, this plugin has some advantages. Um, for example, what you can do is uh, specify parents. So this means if you would select some special value in the first column, the second would change uh, depending on which parent and uh, parent you have selected in the first one and which children you have added for the second one. So this plugin would give you a bit more flexibility regarding what can be displayed, but the actual UI is uh, not that native like the Cordova plugin we have right here. So um, make your decision what you need, what's more important to you. Uh, if you can somehow make it happen, try to use the Cordova one, which will give you the best UI experience for the user. If you have complex data and need this child structure, perhaps go with the other one uh, or wait until uh, somebody has merged or fixed the error uh, on this Cordova plugin, but it's still open since last summer. So I don't know if or when this might be changed, but uh, this UI is just amazing with the Cordova plugin. All right, I hope you enjoyed this quick win. Make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel for more Ionic videos and also check out the ionicacademy.com if you want a complete training site and become an Ionic developer with courses, projects, and a great community. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day and take care. <laughs>